Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very, very special edition of Jalak. <laughs> It's a first look, a first glance, and today I am very excited to have with us as guests a dance company, one word name that has, in my mind, electrified and re-energized the global world of Indian classical dance. And I'm talking about Nritya Gram. It's not just a dance company, it's also a physical space, but it's also an idea that is not new to India, but seems very new in today's globalized world. Today, talking to me first is the artistic director of this fabulous dance village and dance company, Shurupa Sen. Shurupa, welcome. Thank you. I am so excited to speak to you because you are stepping on stage as a soloist after many, many years. And you've been in this COVID bubble um, sort of for almost two years. And I know you dance every day, Shirupa, uh, to keep that marvelous body of yours pliable. But tell me, are you nervous about setting foot without any other accompanying body in that space after so long? Mm, actually, it's a, it's, a, it's a completely different experience for me because I think the COVID bubble, actually, as you call it, has given me time for the first time in my life to think a little bit more about my own dance. I have not had that time at all. I had to take Rupnitya Gram, uh, the ensemble, uh, very early since uh, my guru, Kulti Gauri, passed uh, in 1998. And before I knew it, I became responsible for uh, the development of you know, just the place in terms of the dance and the art. And I don't think that I even um, stopped to think before I gave myself to everybody else um, before I gave myself to me. So when everybody says I dance for to find myself or to find my own identity and to express myself, I have, the dance has never been about me. Dance has been to me always about uh, creating art together with people and uh, finding my own little spot in that universe somehow. I have never felt that choreography especially is about, you know, it's coming from me and it's, you know, I, I don't really feel ownership of it much. But as a dancer, I feel um, that you have to own, own the dance. So in a very strange way, while it has been so hard for people, it has been hard for us financially and otherwise, but for me, it has been the most beautiful time to just focus on dance alone, not performance, not when is the next thing, who is the next thing, who should I train, just me. And I think that it has been extraordinarily joyous. So coming back to dance for just the love of dance for me is uh, the solo performance. It's my offering to dance itself. And I find I love it. Like it's, I'm so happy uh, to be doing it. I'm happy. Shurupa, you have a little bit of Bharatanatyam in your body. And, uh, and Sanjukta Panigrahi also started uh, with Bharatanatyam in her body. And so did Sonal Man Singh, and so did uh, Yamini Krishnamurti and Indira Barua. They're all, you know, they got, they had that form in their body before they moved on to their respective styles. Do you think that um, it is in some way useful for an Odissi dancer to have a little bit of exposure in Bharatanatyam? Um, I really can't, I can't speak for others, but I feel that uh, I actually stopped dancing Bhatnatyam when I was in ninth grade. 
So I can't even call myself any Bharatanatyam uh, <laughs> dancer of any kind. But I will say that it gave me a fantastic sense of line, form, and rhythm, which is uh, has definitely helped me to understand my own work better. But I will say also that I've had to unlearn Bharatanatyam for ages. So it's very difficult uh, to do that. Uh, sometimes we tell our dancers it's better not to have learned anything before you come to us because unlearning that and untraining them from that, uh, you know, physical physicality takes a lot of time. But for me, I feel that I don't do anything else. I mean, 24-7 now this is going to be the 32nd year in Instagram. So... I don't think my body does anything else at all. It doesn't, it's forgotten. Now when I try to do some step in Bhadanatyam, they laugh like hell, people. So <laughs> I think I have uh, sufficiently unlearned it a long time ago. But I'm always very grateful for what I've got from Bhadanatyam. I still love it. I still enjoy looking at it and think it's beautiful. What is it? Uh, you do realize, Shurupa, that over the years um, in uh, your own performance, the way you have remapped what you see on not just your bodies, but duet bodies and others and other styles. There is a kind of a pedagogy that has that has emerged, uh, whether you call it that or not. The, the, the way you train, the way you um, make your body more articulate. So it is ready for the choreographer. So, so you, you've toured a lot in the West. You, you've met a lot of great uh, dancers from from styles other than Indian and Asian styles. What are some of the techniques in terms of body training, body preparation, body conditioning that, that you have uh, woven into your own um, uh, practice, and, practice and preparation? Uh, I think in the earlier years, we were exposed to a lot of choreographers uh, who came from abroad. Anybody who went you know, through India would come to Nithagram. And uh, we always did some kind of body training workshop with them. And so we learned uh, bits and pieces from different people. And uh, also a lot of the work that happened in India, like Kalari or, you know, uh, yoga, uh, you know, traditional Nadi Shastra, ODC exercises, which are typical to ODC. So all of that, I think, ultimately it informs you in one way or the other. For me, certainly, I have had uh, some physical injuries in the earlier years of my training. And so I became extremely uh, interested in alignment. So I studied alignment for myself for many years now. I mean, for many, many years. So right now, um, even uh, since the last four years, I would say the way that we train our body has change. And I can't really pinpoint and say whether it's this person or that person who has helped, but I feel grateful to a lot of people who have helped um, somehow imbibed the things that are required for the ODC body. Uh, since we don't do anything else, uh, I think that my work has been first, and I'm always been my biggest project in terms of I try everything on myself and only then teach someone else. And uh, I have found again in these two years of COVID, I mean, this really COVID has been transformative for me also. Uh, while training some of the students, I found that what I know and how I communicate that idea to them in terms of the body conditioning work has completely transformed the way that they dance, the way they understand it. And it's also been a revelation for me um, to articulate it so clearly because for a long time, I, I wasn't doing the body conditioning with them so much. And uh, I was training myself because I work very, very specific work, whether, um, I mean, it's, it's another story altogether, but when I started translating this information to them and I, you know, trying to bring the parallels of uh, what we are doing in the body conditioning work to directly to the dance in the class so that they begin to, you know, immediately learn to apply it. I saw jumps like I haven't seen before. So I think that, uh, Everybody has helped um, Western, 
techniques, Indian techniques. Um, I think we have to be grateful for everybody. And uh, also to me, to my own injuries, because I learned from them. And uh, my one aim is that dancers should not get hurt when they dance. And I promise my dancers that if they follow what it is that I'm saying, they will be able to dance forever. So, yes. So you made it, you became the project and you, you, became, you became the, the dartboard or the guinea pig on which you have learned these techniques. So, yeah, I, I think that's fascinating. Let's talk about the, the solo that you're doing and your eternal fascination with the Gita Govinda. How many pieces are you going to be presenting? Uh, I'm doing six pieces, um, two songs from, from the Sakhi, two songs of Krishna, two songs of Radha. All of it has a spectacularly beautiful music, which I love. I'm extremely attached to, you know, the, the connection between music and dance. And so all my favorite pieces of music, uh, which make me dance. So, uh, Geet Govind is definitely, it lends itself to what you see so easily. It's a practice. It's the traditional um, singing of Orissa for years. It's, that's what they sing in the temples. So I, I feel like I have to do a lot more of the Geet Govind, but each time I address a new piece, I find that I learn so much more. So it's my favorite work of anyway. So I, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I know that you also uh, created and you've sat sat in the orchestra, you know, uh, reciting bowls and uh, creating these little, you know, little small phrases of rhythm. So it's obvious that you're really fascinated with the 360 degree world of Odyssey, not just, you know, not just to perform, but also everything that happens around it. But I don't know if people know what an interesting and intuitive filmmaker that you've become during COVID. I think, I think that it's that same kind of curiosity because I saw at least two of the showcases and uh, that uh, the student showcases. And I was amazed to see how intelligently they were filmed. And in one, I was told you were flat on your stomach holding a camera. So, <laughs> which, which brings me to, and the last one I saw was the beautiful finale of the dancers disappearing into white light as they danced away. So what is what kind of learning have you had during COVID with the relationship between the dancing body and the camera? I've always been interested in photography. That's something I do for fun. And uh, again, with COVID, I get up every morning and I go off and Instagram is very beautiful. So I go off and I take pictures of all kinds of things. I think of photography as a way to uh, understand secrets of the nature that I don't quite understand. It sort of unravels to me and I think it connects me somewhat to myself. And I don't know, I don't know exactly what it does, but it's it's fascinating for me. And so when we actually, the, I, by default, I became a filmmaker because we were trying to do this thing. Everybody is filming. We don't know anything about it. So we started doing this. And so we should do the showcase of our you know usual annual day thing. And we only had these phone cameras and we thought, uh, okay, uh, let's try and shoot it. And I found that um, it, was, it was like exactly like choreography for me. It's like, it's intuitive. I uh, watch them dance. I know their bodies so well. I know the dance and I've created the dance. So I understand the music. I know which person is going to look which way at which time. And so I just dance with them. I just go in and I allow myself to just follow them. Um, so it's like a dance for me. And I know exactly when I want this, I want to see this, so I want to see that. So it's more like holding the camera and thinking of it from a spectator's point of view, but knowing what the choreographer wants to show. So that's sort of a, I mean, of course, there are friends of mine who are actual filmmakers and they laugh at me because I have a long way to go and I don't really know very much, but uh, I'm learning and I'm fascinated and uh, hopefully I'll do better every time. But the results so far have been wonderful. And so was the beautifully filmed Fall for Dance North, 
I thought that was also very beautifully filmed. I know that that was another filmmaker, but it's it's a way for me to actually realize that if you know the dance, if you know the choreography, and if somebody like you is also is behind the camera, you can actually make it uh, not bland and not flat. Which uh, I've been which, actually telling a lot of people, a lot of people who've been filming us. I always say I'm I'm not happy because. I'm not seeing what I want you to see of the dance. And so it was interesting that as soon as you took the camera, you know what you want them to see. So that became interesting for me as a, just a sort of a discovery. So Shirupa, I, I know that um, you have uh, now had a long collaboration with the Chitrasena Dance Company and uh, Sri Lankan Dance, um, and you've created Ahuti. Samhara was a big hit and now you've got Ahuti. Tell me about what it is about Kandyan dance that you felt would be the fit or the complement to Odissi. I think uh, it started really with uh, uh, Guru Chitrasena who came here and he saw us dance. He came with Bajiraji, his wife. And he watched us uh, practice and uh, he actually said to us that, oh, um, you know, I think you can learn Canyon dance and you should come for six months to Sri Lanka and stay with us. And he just said that outright. He was quite a grand old man, this amazing figure. And so uh, after that, it was Uteka, I think who came and since then of course we are all you know in love with each other a bit you know the Chitrasenas and us so we are like family and for eight years we watched each other's work not thinking of anything other than just watching each other's work we went there they came here we did some workshops with them they did. so slowly we began to understand what it is that we have in common and I felt that it was it would be a wonderful masculine counterpart to the femininity of Odissi. And we began to, also for me, it's important to uh, comprehend where, you know, the style originates and how, how they move, where is the movement coming from inside the body. And so only after eight years of doing this, that uh, I, I, I had said to them that, We'll just try doing something together. If something comes out of it, great. If it doesn't, we'll have learned something anyway. So uh, the wonderful people that they are, they decided, okay, you know, fine. So we actually lived to almost eight months together to wow. create Lamhara. And then we realized wow. that, you know, we work well together. So that's how Avuti happened after that. Well, you know, the, the way you talk and the way you talk about very cr carefully crafting work where you take maybe a year or more to create one work is not the way Indian dance works normally. I mean, it goes from item to item, piece to piece, and then you cobble it together and you have a performance. So this is more akin to, I would say, the Western style of working. You know, you have, you create one evening's length work, but it takes sometimes two years to create it. Uh, and um, which to me is fascinating. I like that way of working because it really allows you to look at every single aspect and really meticulously craft it. But sometimes it's not in sync with, with the way the Indian juggernaut works. Yeah. To, yeah. Um, like that. Though. Juggernaut and the juggernaut. Yes. <laughs> well, I absolutely know, know the origin of the word. Yeah. I just wanted to also ask you about uh, I worked with a Western choreographer once uh, on a solo. And on the day of performance, Shurupa, he made me do the entire, like he did, made me do the entire piece. You know, it was a 50, 58 minute piece. He said, you do it after lunch, closer to the show, because I want you to get that, that energy. Don't do it in the morning and then, you know, relax and then get on the show. You have to be really warmed up. So this was not something I had done before. This is about 15, 18 years ago. But I, I found it helped me, you know. I mean, I danced full out. And then it was, and then when I got on stage, I mean, I danced it again. So uh, do you have a practice on the day of performance? Um, I used to, not anymore. Not anymore. I pace myself very, very differently now. Uh, basically, you listen to your body. And you figure out what you need on that day. 
So I have a routine that I, I follow. Um, and it's, uh, it's not what I used to do when I was 30, uh, definitely, or 20. But now I know how to pace it so that I'm warmed up, but I'm not exhausted. The two totally different things now. Uh, yeah. Some of our friends, uh, some of our friends who are in the West, they say that earlier, you know, we used to take half an hour warm up and three hours of dancing, and now we have to do three hours of warm up and half an hour of dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's something like that. You have to know just how much to pace yourself. So, uh, yeah, it's different now. I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do fifty-eight minutes of dancing before I go get on the show. I wouldn't do it anymore. Yeah, well, you know, I know a lot of people are waiting to see you um, once again uh, in in a solo avatar. I'm going to catch your piece uh, another time. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to this. I mean, to see you on the stage. I've heard your voice as you explain. I've, I've known you as artistic director, introducing. I've seen you as, as one of, a uh, quote in your words, one of Pratima's aunts, you know, running around. <laughs> running around here in the, in the mid nineties when I visited Nitigram. So I've seen so many avatars of you, the camera person, the choreographer, but now we're going to see uh, Shurupa Sen, the solo dancer, in a sense, coming home to yourself in a way, isn't it? Yes. Yes. I hope you're watching. <laughs> you watch because uh, I'm so happy. I just want to say before, I'm so happy to have my mother and Upeka here. Uh, Upeka to me is, you know, is my beloved and uh, my mother has always been there and uh, Gaima is somebody who always like, she was so strict with me, but at the same time, she, you know, she basically made me do uh, some very, very serious work. So I think that I'm blessed and I hope that if not for anything else, I can do a reasonably decent job of it for their sake not for mine. I think it will grow. I think it will be an incandescent performance and then you will, it, it will grow like, like all performances grow because I know you will then have this evening to then uh, not just hold on to, but to embellish and to tour with, you know, so. Um, I, have no, I have no great uh, ambition. It will uh, happen. Just one day at a time doing my best. It's and just fine. loving Loving what I do, and that's enough for me. Well, thank you so much for this, Shurupa. I'm going to be talking to Upeka, and I know that Ahuti is booked uh, in America uh, in 2022, and I'm hoping to be there to catch it and to stand up with the audience and, you know, <laughs> cheer you at, at the end. So thank you so much, and all the very, very best. Thank from you. All thank you so much. You never age. I don't know how. But anyway, okay. Fabulous to talk to you. Thank you. Joining our conversation is the one and only Upeka Chitrasena. Now, she is a fabulous dancer herself, but she had she's stepping out of a big shadow. Her parents, Chitrasena and Vajira, are giants in the Sri Lankan artistic uh, canvas. Her mother, uh, so fortunately, has also been honored with, the, with India's Padma Shri. It's a long time coming. But Upeka is going to talk to us about this love affair that not just she, but the Chitrasena Dance Company has had with Ritigram. And in my conversations with you, Upeka, welcome to this, uh, to our conversation. I know that you have said, you you waited to go to Ritigram to sit and watch the way in which the dancers worked and your niece, Taji, who is a star now of in your company, has also learned a lot by being in Nitigram. Can you just tell us a little bit about what that kind of learning and discoveries have been for you? <clears throat> well, uh, I started coming here in 2003. My parents came first, like Shurupa said, uh, he saw them dance. And he invited them to come to Sri Lanka and for us to learn uh, Odissi. And because he felt that there was something uh, similar. Plus, you know, for me, I always feel like it's like a man and woman. That Kandyan dance is the male version of Odissi, the female. 
So I don't know. I, I, I think there is some connection for me from my past birth. My parents were invited uh, to travel to India and it was my father's last trip. Actually, he performed last in India in Kinkini Kolam in 1998. And he said he doesn't want to travel again with the company. So that's the time I took over the company and traveled. But when he got this invitation from my mom and dad to travel in India and go to any place to see any dance that they want to. So uh, I uh, got together with the Indian High Commission, uh, Mrs. Sandhu. Mrs. Rinath Sandhu is the one who organized it. And I told them that they must go to Bangalore and go visit Tintagram. So that's when they came. And a few months after that, I was performing uh, in Delhi with the uh, Sunera Foundation. I was a guest artist with Sunera Foundation with Sunetra Bandar Naika. And after, they fin after we finished that tour, I stayed back and I flew to Bangalore we were to see my niece was studying in, uh, Umi was studying, and that is Taji's older sister was studying in Bangalore. So with her, I came to, uh, first I went to see a performance in the city of Nithegram and immediately fell in love with their performance and went backstage and met, uh, or I, I met Lynn because I don't think I, I can't remember meeting the dancers, but I know I met Lynn and Lynn immediately told me, why don't you come back with us? And so I said, no, I, I haven't got clothes. I just came for the performance. She said, no, no, I'll give you clothes. <laughs> so that was our first connection with my connection with Lynn. And then the next day I took uh, my niece and we went, to, uh, I came here. That was my first visit. And I saw them dance and I also danced for them. I did a solo and that was the first connection with the candy and dance. And uh, then it went on, like she said, for years we visited each other. They came to our place, they watched performances. And then Samhar happened in 2012. And then Ahuti. <laughs> but for me, I, when I gave up dancing, I, I actually didn't know what I was, you know, I, it, it became very strange for me not to be on stage, but I, I love being with the dancers. I always travel with my company. But for me, uh, coming here and sitting and watching Shurupa work, has actually changed my life. I, I really don't know what I would have been doing if I hadn't got this. It just gives me so much pleasure. I don't miss being on stage. I just love watching her work, her creating. I have seen her in many avatars as a teacher, a choreographer, dancer, and uh, of course, working uh, in Samhara with her. I mean, seeing her, how she started, how we all, you know, she always said, let's do these little exercises. And, uh, and of course, Heshma. Heshma has been, Heshma is my artistic director, my other niece. She has learned a lot from Nityagram and Churupa. She always talks about it and her work changed uh, after seeing her and working with Shurupa. And I know that your niece, your star dancer, Taji, is also says she's learned so much whenever yeah. she has she come. Said, yeah, she's very fortunate to have been on the stage with them. I mean, she always talks about it, that uh, that has been, for her, that has been the turning point in her life also. And so for same for Heshma. Heshma always talks about it. If we didn't do Samhar, I don't know where we would have. All the other things came after Samhar. All the new creations that Heshma did and taking our dance to another level. Definitely there was a lot of influence from Instagram and working with them, seeing them, living with them. It's like uh, the year before COVID, I think I was here at least four to five times that year. Wow. I know every time I either talk to you or see you, you're either just come back from Bangalore or you're going to Bangalore. 
So I don't know if you've traveled anywhere else. But yeah. Upeka, you're here now because Shirupa is returning to the stage as a soloist. And, uh, uh, you know, with all the deep bonds that you have created with Nithigram and with Shirupa and Lynn, what have been your thoughts as you just watched her rehearse and prepare for this uh, very important moment in her life? I'm so thrilled that she's doing solo. I've always told her I really want, because I've seen, I mean, she did solo performances, just a short solo performance once or twice in the last uh, couple of years. But uh, so we've been in touch, even though for two years I didn't travel here. My last trip was with them also to, uh, I went with them to Bombay and while they performed. And uh, so, uh, so she has been talk. We talk to each other almost like every few days, and I know what she's doing, and that keeps me going. You know, not being able to come here, at least I know what they are doing during the lockdowns. And for us also, it has been very difficult. Our school has been closed for almost two years. So when she told me that uh, she was going to do a, uh, going to dance solo, and I immediately. I got excited now. I was very really worried and scared. How am I going to travel? Because I know that travel has been really bad. So I kept uh, asking everybody, do you think I will be able to get a visa to go to India? Uh, so I've been in touch with the Indian High Commission almost all the time, asking them, when are you going to start giving a tourist visa? So I, be, I knew what was happening. And then when Lynn told me the show date has been fixed and I'm here. And from the first, uh, the day after I uh, arrived here, she did her first rehearsal. I, 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 I have forgotten my age and I'm sitting down on the floor sitting for hours because I, I exercised and exercised right through the, uh, you know, lockdowns. Because I wanted to be fit. I don't, I have always been, I don't want to have pain. I don't want to live with pain. So now I suddenly feel that I can sit on the floor and be comfortable and watch rehearsal for hours. Wow. So, That's great. And, yeah. And watching her dance has been like, for me, I get very emotional. Actually, I can't talk about her. That's the big uh, problem that I have. Every time I see her dance, I start crying because I know what she's doing. The best. You like you, you've been born again. You've been born yes. again, Rebecca. The best decision I made. <laughs> yes. Okay. I, I'm telling you, your emotion, your uh, affection, your adoration, your love, it all comes through. And, um, you know, I, I think you're carrying this, the spirit of the dance company, all the dancers, Heshma, Taji, everybody who loved Nitik Ram. Yeah, they are very, very sad. <laughs> They're very so sad that they can't see. I'm constantly sending them pictures, a little bit of videos and saying, then thank you, thank you. They're all, she, they're all crying, calling and crying. And they, because they all, each one has some problem or the other. Well, you are going to be one of the very fortunate ones to be in Bangalore uh, for this great, lovely, lovely performance that so many people are looking forward to. I can't be there. I wish I could. But mm -hmm. um, I know that, you know, all the hopes, everybody who loves Nitigram, everybody who admires Shirupa are uh, just rooting for her. Thank you so much for spending the time, Upeka, to share your thank thoughts you. about the uh, Nitigram and the connection. And I want to thank you all for watching. You know, we couldn't speak to Lynn because um, uh, she uh, was not feeling well. And she is also one of the big architects. And she does this amazing lighting. And yes. she actually told me that she's quite nervous because she hasn't been back onto a stage for a long yeah. time. You know, sourcing equipment and everything. But look, we have this, this fabulous soloist who seems to have been born for dance. And she's stepping onto the stage in Bangalore on Saturday, the 4th of December, and uh, presenting six pieces from, from the Gita Govinda. And we've, we've, we know what a superb dancer she is, what an amazing and imaginative choreographer Shirupa Sen is. So, and with the founder of Nitigram, Pratima Gauri Pedi, looking on and smiling, I'm sure, from wherever she is, I want to say thank you all for watching. And for those who are watching this, and if you are in Bangalore, please go and watch the amazing Shurupa Sen. Thank you all. Namaste. Basant 